It's cheap, but is it any good? Today, we're going to talk about the Beamswork set of LED lights that you'll commonly find on Amazon or eBay. So, let's put that to the test. How good is this light? Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today we're going to talk about what is a very frequently asked question for me when it comes to talking about lighting for planted tanks, and that is, is the beams work light good? So, with that being said, we've got a few things that we need to assess. Number one, where do you find this light? almost always on Amazon, sometimes on eBay. I'll have a link in the description below of the lights I'm testing, as well as the third light that I don't have uh, in the freshwater line. So let's go over the basics. There's three major lights. You have the EA F-Spec, the DA F-Spec, and then you have the, the kind of blue and white, what they call their discus light. So let's talk about each one. The cheapest of all three is the EA F-Spec. This is a pretty good light in the grand scheme of things for how cheap it is. It has a full color spectrum, but it sits a little higher uh, than, than like the, the daylight clear white spectrum of 6500K. The Kelvin on this is about 7500K. But it has red, green, and blue LEDs. Why is it so cheap? There's not a lot of LEDs total on this light. The next upgrade from that is the DA F-Spec. This one's a little more expensive. You're probably going to pay something like, uh, I think it's $70 or so for a 48-inch light, just to give you an example of what you're looking at, where the EA would cost you about $35 to $40. So it's, it's a significant difference. Almost the exact same light, except for there are more LEDs in this light. So for each row of lights, and you'll see this uh, in the video shortly, if you would have three bulbs in the EA, you will have five bulbs in the DA. Otherwise, the color spectrum is exactly the same. It's just more LEDs and thus a more powerful light. Finally, you have the discus light. This light is only white or blue or in the case of the older version of it that I'm testing that I happen to have, there's no blue spectrum, it's just a low light and a higher light, where it's like half the bulbs on versus all the bulbs on. But these are, uh, you would compare this to say like some of the Phoenix lights, where um, they're just white and blue lights, or you know, current has lights like that. There's only a little bit of blue, so it's not too much blue, which is good on the newer versions of the light. Um, they're a little different build, a little different profile. They're a thin profile kind of light. Uh, those are the same price as the DAF spec, um, and they're a warmer light. So the light, the, the Kelvin, which is your color temperature, um, and that just tells you whether it's warm, cool, or daylight, is warmer, which means it's under 6500K. It's about 54, 5500. I think their official paperwork says something slightly different, but you'll see in the video that we're about to go into the, the drastic differences. So how do we compare these? They're way cheaper than buying the Fluval 3.0. However, I want you to see the difference between a Fluval, so your, your high caliber, what I think is the best light for your money on the market right now, versus this more economical, far cheaper to buy. And I, I can't tell you the number of times I get questions like, hey, Bentley, is this light any good? Have you tried this light? And you get the same question about like the Aqua Neats and uh, there's like a million different brand names that are all the same couple of Chinese manufacturers that make these lights. So, um, you know, they, they all fall in the same range. They're cheap and many people have used them to great success. But are they good in a planted tank? That's what we're going to answer. So first, I want to do a light comparison. And then I'm going to go down the serious details on each of these lights. And where it's relevant 
to maybe consider buying one of these lights versus skipping them all together, just save your money, get a fluval. I have some really strong opinions here, and they might surprise you. So let's start with the light comparison. We're going to do this on my 90-gallon tank down in the fish room. So you got a nice and tall tank. you got a fairly deep tank. It's 18 inches front to back. It's 24 inches tall. Let's check that out. Okay, guys. So now that we're down here, we're with the 90-gallon. Uh, this is in the display room. This is actually normally done with a beams work light. We're using 36-inch lights on a 4-foot tank. So we're going to see some small differences. These aren't exactly the lights you want exactly for this tank. But these perfectly fit 40 breeders for all these lights. And I think it's not common for people to necessarily have a lot of big tanks. You might have smaller tanks and your big tank might be something like a 40 breeder. So I felt like this would be a really good test because with the 90 gallon, bring my hand in here, you're 24 inches tall, right? So we've got a taller tank. We're 18 front to back uh, and then four foot across. So that gives us a pretty wide tank in general to work with. Now we've started with the Fluval 3. This is going to be kind of our test case to give us an idea of how different these beams work lights are compared to a high quality light. So this is at the max setting. So for those of you who have a Fluval light, the green is your program setting. The white is just everything on max. That's what we're currently sitting on, the white setting. So what I'm going to do is turn that off, and then we'll turn on the first of the two beams work and get a comparison. I'm going to tap this thing through its modes. There we go. So tank stark. Now what we'll do is we'll start with the EA F spec, which is probably the cheapest of all lights. And you'll notice right away that now, granted, I need to put this a little more center of the tank so it's similar positioning. Let me get you that. There you go. About the same position. You should be able to see already the difference in brightness. Still pretty good light. Still fairly bright. But you can see kind of on the far left edge, we're starting to get a little more faded light, even though we're at the same position as the Fluval 3. However, in the center here, especially this area, we've got good bright light easily enough to grow plants, even though my swords look horrible right now. <laughs> Uh, so, good light, we can see our fish, we can see good color. Let's look at the other beams work light, kind of the, the discus light, if you will. And that light is just white and a little bit of blue. So now, we do need to adjust a little bit. Three lights on one tank means uh, positioning is a bit weird. I'm going to take this light off. Sorry. We'll cut this edit out. <laughs> we'll edit this out. Probably leave it in, actually, because you guys seem to like when I screw up and leave blooper type stuff in. However, I'm trying to get it the same position, so i got to move the fluval a little bit. There we go. So here we go. This is full. Uh, you'll notice, again, not as much light as the fluval. What I would say is important here is the color cast is a little different. You'll notice this a little more yellow hue here, where it was kind of very bright white, more cool, like bluish tones. Uh, I think the beams work EA F specs are a 7,500 Kelvin light, so 7,500K. This one, if I remember right, and I'll give you statistics when we go back to my face, um, is uh, on the warmer side. So it's going to be under 6,500. So probably like 5,500 or 5,000K. You can see... Still pretty good light, less than the fluval for sure, but this would be enough to grow plants. Now, one thing we do see is we see a little bit more of that kind of flicker effect, uh, which some people really like that effect, some people don't. So that kind of shimmer that you get is kind of coming through, but that's because it's not enough power in this light versus a powerful light that creates that effect by refracting off of the movement in the top of the water. So again, we'll turn that off. And I just want to compare the Fluval one more time because I think it's really worth noting the difference. Like, you can see the, the, a three-foot Fluval can cover a four-foot tank pretty much perfectly. And you see how much brighter it is at max compared to this discus light. 
which again will go off and will come on over here. And this is all the whites on. And then they do have a blue mode, or this is a lower light mode. Sorry, they have a, like a full mode and a half mode. But that's the max light. This is what you're more likely to use. You can see that difference. A little bit warmer light, a little yellow cast. Not quite as bright, but still pretty good. And again, we'll compare this one more time. I'm going to turn the fluval back on. I'm going to freak my fish out. So you get the fluval on, and we'll compare it to the EAF spec one more time. i got to move this just to make room on top of the tank. It's really not designed to hold three lights on it. <laughs> or at least not the way that I have it set up. I would have to uh, have a different type of lid to make that work. So bring this back up. Get our EAF spec back in place. So fluval's on right now, and the fluval's toward the front half of the tank. Keep this in mind, and it's still this bright. So your high-quality lights really can make a difference, but and just you'll notice this is the night only, just the other click, just so you guys know. But this is the full, and the EA is the cheapest. There is also the DAF spec. I don't own any of those. They're about twice as many lights. However, it doesn't mean it's twice as powerful. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Um, and it's not truly twice, but you can see a little cooler cast. It's not as yellow here, a little more blue tone compared to the fluval, but still good bright light. Still good enough for plants, even in a big tank like a 90 gallon like this, especially if you have a forefoot, which is what I normally keep on this. You know, we can see the younger growth down here in that sword that's growing out after I fixed the nutrient deficiency it looks just fine, and this only sees a beam's work. Now, granted, swords don't need as bright a light. They like long exposure. However, I've grown lots of plants in this tank, and uh, all done under a beam's work. So there you go, guys. We'll jump back to my face, and uh, we'll talk a little more in-depth on these things. Well, there you go. There is your direct light comparison. It's granted now it's at night. So the room is dark. I have nearly every other light in that room off. But you can see the clear differences in the coloration that the light casts on the tank. So that's that color temperature, the Kelvin. And you can see how bright each light is compared to the fluval light. Obviously, the fluval is a far more powerful light. It's more expensive. It's far higher quality. It has built-in timing. But, but, and I get this question a lot too. How do I operate the timer for the beams work, which is an optional part. Each timer goes to a singular light. They cost you 15 bucks. So about the same to buy like a, a timer from a hardware store. The only difference is those timers from the hardware store will allow you to do two things at once, usually, or more. But what the, the benefit to the beams work timer is that if you want your blue lights on the same time you want the white, green, and red on, you have to have the timer. The manual switch is only all the blue lights or all the other lights. Uh, and this is the case for the discus light, the DA, and the EA. Now, of course, the, the discus light that I tested is the older model before they started including the blue light. So it's pure white. But it had those two modes, full power and mid power. The difference is it would be full power and blue. That's the only difference between the old model. However, the white light that gets cast is the same as the light that I showed you. So... Let's go over a very fast tutorial of exactly how to use one of the beams work timers. Okay, so now just a little bonus. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to work the beams work timer. So this is a $15 add-on, if I remember right. Uh, I'll link it. I'll link a description in the description. I'll have an Amazon link just to so get an actual price, and I'll have a proper price when we go to my face. But um, these. The instructions that come with these things suck. So let me explain how everything works. You have two buttons. You have the white. So this will remotely turn the light on. And you can see I've got the fluval on just to give us some tank light. And then the blue will turn on the blue light only. Now you can have both white and blue on with a timer. You can't do this normally without the timer. It's about the only benefit you get on top of having the timer if you want it instead of something like a, a hardware timer. 
So to set the time, you're going to hold down the blue and the white button at the same time. So this sets the timer. You're going to see here, I'm saying it's 3.08 a.m. I'm going to change that for right now. And we're going to say that it's 11 or 10 a.m. We'll do 10.30 is what time it is. So again, white hours, blue minutes, it's a 24-hour clock. So learn your military time for those that don't know it. Now this will turn my light on because I already have it programmed, but... Oh, it didn't. Good, good. So now to time the white lights, you hold down only the white button. Oh, I turned it on. Sorry. <laughs> So you're going to hold it down until it says on. And it's going to start blinking. Now you set your on time. And I have it to 1130. That's why it didn't turn on. So I'm going to change this to 8 a.m. See, I have it at 1130. I'm going to change it to 8 a.m. Again, blue minutes, white hours. There we go, 8. Then it's going to blink off. It actually only says OF, which is kind of funny to me, but that's its off. And we're going to set an off time of 9.30 p.m. So that's 1930. White switches are hours. Blue switches are minutes. And then we let this blink through, and it'll set the time, and it should turn the light on. However, I manually turned it off. So it's going to trigger off. So if we turn the fluval off here, we're going to turn this guy off. Now, if you want the blue light on at the same time, you'll hold down the blue button. Let's say I only want my blue on at night. So this goes on until 9.30. So I'm going to set my on time at 9.30. We'll say 25, five minutes before the blue lights are going to come on. It'll get a little brighter for some weird reason. And then we start at 8 in the morning, so we're going to have our blue lights go until 8 a.m. Actually, we'll go 8 to 5. That way, there's no stopping of light. There's no sudden weirdness. I personally don't like light at night on most of my tanks, but this is how you would set it. The set doesn't matter until it hits its first rollover. So what you would do is you'd set it in the neutral position. So there's uh, there's a right and a left and a center. That neutral position is where you need to set it. And then once it hits that timer, the first time to turn on, it's going to turn all your lights on. And then it'll follow your timer from there on out unless it loses power. And that is how you program a beams work light. It's not the easiest thing in the world. The fluval is certainly a lot simpler, but it's not terrible. Hope that helps you guys out. Well, there you go. The mystery is solved on how to use one of these little guys. Um, I hope that it was clear enough for you guys. It's pretty simple, right? It's just if you want to do the whites, you hold down this. If you want to do the blues, you hold down the blue button. If you want to set the time, the total time for its timer, so it knows it is currently 4 p.m. or whatever, you hold both at the same time. You'll start... It'll go through a cycle, you set your on time, your off time, and you're done. Very, very simple. Now, if you want your blues to run at the same time, you just have to overlap your timer. I personally don't like running a lot of blue light, as you guys know, with the case of the fluval, as I've explained in the past, when you run extra blue light, algae seems to take a lot of advantage of blue light. So on my beams works, I don't have the blue light on except for a single tank at night, and I only have one of my two lights on. And that's the big rainbow tank. So let's set this thing aside. Let's talk about what, where would you buy a beams work? Why are they worth it? And when is the point where they're no longer worth investing in and it's worth saving your money for something really nice like the fluval light? And I'm going to go to the fluval every time because I think that that thing is the best thing on the market right now for its cost. Um, I think the beams work is actually a really good light. What um, a kind of a secret is that my display room, and you saw that in the display room tour, started on nothing but beams work lights, and they still are down there. Now, I will tell you this. The, the big community tank that has two big six-foot lights on it, 
Those have been in use for two and a half years, I think, now. I had some other lights before. I really didn't like them. I found those. They were the cheapest option for me. And that was at a time where I was being a little too thrifty. And I hadn't really learned the full like reason that you spend money on a good light. I learned with those. Now, that being said, I still suggest these lights. However, I only suggest them if it is impossible for you to wait and buy a better light. If you know that I have a tank, my light burned out, I only have X dollars to replace it. That's where I would say a beams work. However, if you really want to do a good planet tank, the beams work is going to give you medium light at best. On my big rainbow tank, two six-foot lights on a six-foot tank provides medium light. The fluvals, if they had a six-foot, a single six-foot would be high light, basically, to the whole tank. At a very minimum, medium light. Medium high. And if I had two, it would be a high light to the whole tank, without question. There's such a more powerful light. That being said, the beams work has a couple things going for it. One, the DA and EAF specs have much better color temperature and color range than most of the other cheap LED solutions out there. I can remember when I was getting back into Planet Tanks, and I was, I was starting plants, I was kind of starting my journey to where I am now, and all over the internet people were like, oh, you can't grow plants with those, you need a current satellite, or you need a this, you need a Kessel. And my roommate and I, my roommate spent a lot more time on Facebook than I did it in some forums. We would laugh because we'd show pictures of the tank, and you guys can look back on the old videos on the channel. Yeah, they're terrible quality, but you, you can see the plant growth has always been healthy in that tank, and it's always only had those dumb beams work lights on it. They're super simple, they're cheap, but they do a good job. So what are the downsides? Number one, because they're made in China, and because they are meant to be cheap, they're not UL rated. Why does that matter? Well, the UL rating is about getting submerged. So if those lights fall in the water, they're gone. More importantly, if they fall in the water while you're not there, they're a significant fire hazard. Something like the fluval light, which is UL rated, I think it's up to like three meters for like 15 minutes or something real crazy like that. If it's UL rated, and a fire does occur, you're covered by your insurance. Your insurance, if you have renter's insurance or uh, you know homeowner's insurance, if you own a home, if it's not UL rated, they can get you for that. Most don't, but some, if they're really, really terrible insurance companies, will. Sometimes that you know extra hundred bucks for that one light can mean the world in the worst scenario. Now two, the beams work lights, because they have so few LEDs, they only produce so much light. Usually it's good on a smaller tank, like I, have for a very long time, ran 40 breeders with a single beams work, and they did great. But over time, they dim, which I, in a year of having the Fluval 3.0s, I've never seen them dim. Um, I've had lots of problems in shipping the beams work lights, where they arrive broken because the outer casing is fairly cheap and fairly fragile. And a lot of times, I, my biggest frustration with getting some of those lights in has been I have shipped back on the six-foot light especially, but also on a four-foot light, I have shipped back six lights to get three. Two six-foot lights, one four-foot light. In order to get three, I shipped six back. So it's nine total lights because they got damaged in shipping because they're so cheaply packaged. They break in transit a lot. And I personally am not going to deal with a small break, even if it looks like it's only on the outside of the, the thing, because that's a, that's a place for water to get in easier. It's a risk of the board frying, the, the circuit board underneath that runs the light. I'm not taking that risk. So you might not be getting that light as fast as you think you are. And you might go through quite a lot of hassle shipping yourself and rebuying and getting a refund and rebuying and getting a refund because they don't do proper replacements every time I've interacted with them. It's why I haven't bought any more of them since. 
I would just rather take the time and wait and buy a fluval light. And I've slowly replaced several of my beams work with fluval lights. But over time, those lights dim. And I can tell you that the ones that I've had for two and a half years are probably two thirds the power, maybe half what they were when I first got them. Um, so what a tank used to be kind of medium, medium, high light is now medium, medium, low. But it's still enough if you do lots of easy plants. If you have a shallower tank, like a 40 breeder, a 20 long, um, you know, any of the, the not like huge tanks, anything that isn't two foot tall, maybe it's only 18 inches tall or smaller, you're probably fine. So where, what are the other negatives? Because the, the light pattern on those flu, uh, the fluval versus the beams work. So the fluval has lots of little LEDs. And that creates a uniform light pattern across the whole tank. So the whole tank looks of one color. Well, those beams work only have a few larger LEDs. And if you look, I should, I should have shot this. I'm sorry I didn't. But if you look at certain parts in a tank, you'll see a bright green spot, a bright red spot, a bright blue spot when those lights are on. And you'll see them on you know, like your hardscape or your plants. Some people like that look. So some people might go for that intentionally. If you want uniform color cast across everything, maybe your intent is to do some small YouTube videos to teach people how amazing fish X is that nobody teaches about on YouTube. Like rainbow fish. Wonder where I'm going to find that. <laughs> but you might not want that in your video. But let's say that you're just starting out. This is your first tank. You kind of want to step in a little easy. The beams work is a great option. The EA F spec especially is a good option. I personally think that for its cost, that thing's the best cheap light out there. I use the EAs. I don't use the DAs. And I like the amount of light they give me. Now, I think the DA is a better light and it will probably last longer. I would suspect that my... <laughs> I hope you guys didn't hear that cat, but he was just meowing his brains out through my door. Um, I think if I were to redo it today, I would have got the DAF specs just because there's more light, they're more powerful, and they're probably going to last longer. I think that those EAF specs really only kind of have about a three to three and a half year shelf life before they dim so much. You're going to start considering other lights or you're going to start seeing problems with your plant growth. However, if that's all you're looking for, they're a great solution. Now, if you want something that's going to last long term, something that's really powerful, something that's all controlled with the ease of a single app, you can control how much of each light is being pushed. The Fluval is just amazing. And I think, barring that no one releases something that is a significant leap in technology, that'll be the only light I use for a long time. Uh, unless, you know, somebody wants to give me some sweet light. Just saying, you know, UNS, those Titans are pretty cool. They're really expensive, though. I'm not spending that much money on a light. <laughs> but on, in all seriousness, the the discus light, I would almost avoid. I think that the light that is cast by the DAF spec or the EAF spec is better for discus anyway. Or some other lighting option, like maybe a Phoenix Stingray if you're on a shallower tank or or what have you, um, maybe an Aquanite. I personally haven't used Aquanites, but I know plenty of people have. They speak very highly of them. There's lots of Phoenix knockoffs on Amazon that you can find. Most of them work for a little while. They don't last as long as the Phoenixes do. But if you're going to spend the money on a Phoenix, say like a, the 24-7 SE Planet Plus Holy Magic, they've got a lot of acronyms to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, just buy a fluval. Seriously, it like the small difference in money is worth every penny that I've seen watching people use them. I've seen lots of frustration with people with those lights where I don't really see those with the fluval lights at all. Most people like me are kind of an evangelist for that light. So I hope that gives you guys kind of just a, an idea of where to look. I think if you're a seasoned aquarist, you really want to do a nice planted tank, spend the extra money on a light. It's going to be worth it. That those, those better lights last longer. They're more powerful. They're more flexible. They do more of what you want. But if you're just getting into the hobby, or maybe you're just coming to freshwater, let's say you did reptiles and you want to try a fish tank, or you've done saltwater and you want to try a freshwater planted tank, 
And you want to try and go a little easier on your budget to start, get yourself familiar with things, and then build something really sweet. That's where I would suggest looking at the Beams Work light and using that as your entry level light to start kind of teaching yourself. You know, if things go if things go wrong, it's it's less likely to be the light's too powerful or something else. It's a little easier to kind of kind of baby step in, just take those small steps, just tread into the water a little bit. And then from there, once you get a little more seasoned, a little more experience, look at the nicer lights. There's the level of control, the power, the longer lasting. They're just way, way, way better. There's no comparison. And I know even in that light test, you look at it and it's kind of like, well, they're they're kind of close, sort of. like to the, That's on camera. To the human eye, I guarantee you, there is a difference. And you hear in my commentary, they look kind of similar, but... This is cast a little like this. This is cast a little like that. I don't have any control over lights. It's just everything on or everything off. Plus, if you want a timer, you got to pay an extra 15 bucks. Fluval, it's built in. Sure, the lights double the cost, but it's worth it. So, overall, my opinion on the beams work. It's good. It's not great. Great is reserved for only a few things out there. And really, in my book, the only one right now is the Fluval 3.0. The 2.0s are okay. Um, you know, Kessels are fine. I think they're overpriced for what you get. Um, there's there's all sorts of other stuff, like there's the UNS Titan or the ADA lights or the Twin Star. I think all of those are really overpriced. I really do. Um, I know they're really nice lights, and a lot of them aesthetically look better than a Fluval. I care about function. I don't care about form. If I want something pretty, I'll build a housing that hides it. And you won't even know it's there. Other than light seems to be coming out of this pretty wood thing that's hanging from the sky. Or this pretty metal thing that's hanging from your, your ceiling there. Huh. It's one of those things. I think it's more important to look at the function than it is the form. And in this case, the beams work functions pretty freaking well. It's a pretty good light for how cheap it is. But there's a catch. It only lasts so long. And there's certain differences that you saw that can be um, aesthetically unpleasing to some people's eyes. Now, if you don't care about seeing like a big red spot and a green, green spot in your tank, man, this is the best entry level light out there. I really think it is. Um, and you could say, well, you just said you've never tried an Aquini. But I've seen plenty of people that have them. And I'd rather have a beams work every time I've seen them in use. There's a better color. It's better spectrum. It just feels like a slightly better cheap light. <laughs> if that makes sense. Is it is it a great light? No. Is it a good enough light? Yeah, definitely. I hope you guys really enjoy this. Let me know down in the comments how many of you have used a Beams Work light. Maybe you used an Aquanite or you know whatever entry level brand that you got off Amazon or eBay or that dude who was selling it out of the back of a truck. Whatever, right? Let me know what your experiences have been. Uh, what are the goods? What are the bads? And have you tried any of the nicer, more expensive lights? And then are you now like, I'll never go back to a cheap light? Or are you like, I don't think it was worth the money? You're a crazy person, Bentley. Cheap is always better. Let me know down in the comments. If you guys have watched this far, and for some reason you're not subscribed, maybe consider just like hit that little subscribe button. You'll see content like this. I've got a couple other product reviews coming here very soon in the future. We're going to talk about the tidal filters. We're going to talk about the Zis filter. Um, a lot of people have talked about those already, but you know what? I've had mine in practice for months. In the case of the tidal, I've had them since they came out. Um, I've had a Zis running for, I think, two months now to give me some really good analysis. And I've also sat and talked at length with Master Breeder Dean about this filter specifically. And both of us have... Um, Maybe some different opinions than what you've heard elsewhere. Those are both coming. Um, I'm actually currently working on those. So they're coming soon. Um, and then, you know, hey, if you enjoyed this, maybe maybe the thumbs up. I can't. I'm, I'm a goof. I can't help it. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. Again, let me know in the comments, please. I'd really love to hear your feedback. As always, thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome. Okay.
and I'm gonna, just going to say that it is now uh, 9.32, or that's 7.32. God, my, my military time is terrible. 